everybody. Jeff Jones here. Welcome to the weekly Chase Oaks Church podcast. Before we dive in, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and download the Chase Oaks Church app. The app is the best place to catch up on messages, engage with our community, and stay in the loop with everything going on around here. Most importantly, my hope is that today's message inspires you to take your next step in your faith journey. Here we go. All right. Well, good to see you, everybody. So glad you're here, including those online or if you're podcasting this, listening to it at some point. Um, Today is is going to be it's going to be a great night. But uh, and we do. It is a little sad because we're saying goodbye to a series. I always hate saying goodbye to a series to record scratch. But the good news about that is that whenever you say goodbye to something, there's something on the other side to say hello to. And there's two things coming up. So before I get into the talk, there's a few things I want you to know about. Um, one of those is next week, um, Ryan Leak is, I've never done this before, but Ryan is speaking, he's, you know, our, 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 uh, he's our teaching pastor, he does a great job, and he speaks all over the place. And so I asked him, I said, hey, you know what, I bet you have a talk that you've given somewhere else over the last however long that you felt like was just you know, just came together in a unique way. God was in it in a unique way. God used it in a unique way. And sort of the best of. So so next week is not part of a series. It's a standalone, kind of the best of Ryan Leak. And which means it's going to be great. And I already know what he's talking about. He's talking about dealing with complicated or difficult people. And, uh, and if you have a difficult person all week, all you have to say is, I can't deal with you right now. But next week, We're going to go, we're going to figure this out, all right? And uh, it'd be a great week to come invite somebody to sit with you. And then after that, we start a series called Ripple Effect. And Ripple Effect is about how to have the kind of impact that God wants you and I to have. God wants to change the world through you. And he's placed you where he's placed you on purpose. And and we're going to just say, okay, I I think all of us in in our legacy want to be able to look back and realize, yeah, I made a big difference in the world. I made a big difference where God placed me. And that's what that series is about. Two more things this week I want you to know about. Um, Evan just mentioned uh, Todd Bolsinger and the Business Leader Roundtable. And by business, it just, it, 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 any organization, right? If you're in education or healthcare or whatever. But it's a great opportunity to come to meet other people. Todd is a very sought after best-selling author about change and leading through change and a world of change. And so I, I encourage you to not only come because you'll meet other people that way and it'll be impactful, but also bring coworkers with you. It, it'll be, it's not gonna be like a bait and switch Christian, let me tell you about Jesus thing. Um, it'll be, he may allude to his faith because he is a believer, but it'll be a, a conversation I think everybody will be able to connect to. And then this week also is a big week and I'm gonna ask you to participate in prayer. So here's what is gonna happen. We are hosting a conference uh, it's called the Lead Pastor Gathering for a network of churches in which we are part called the Irresistible Church Network. And these are churches around the country that are built around reaching people who don't go to church. They not only want to impact church people, but also are really do things, everything we do in a way for, so that people who don't go to church can connect and come as they are and all that. And you would think, well, that's every church, but it's just not. Um, it's easy for churches to become internally focused, and this is a network of churches that say, I mean, let's stay externally focused and not let that happen to us and help each other do that. And these are amazing pastors from around the country and different parts of the world, and, uh, and we'll be hosting it right in here all week. And it's such a significant week that uh, because some, all of these people are doing great ministry, and I want them to be encouraged, I want them to feel loved, I want them to feel resourced. And so I, hopefully all of you will pray, but I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you're willing to say, you know what, every day this week, I will pray for those pastors that God would speak to them and encourage them and breathe life into them. So if you're up for that, will you uh, do that? And thank you. And I know, I know God's going to work. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. I usually don't do all those announcements, but uh, there's just a lot going on. So today... We are finishing our Record Scratch series uh, built around these statements of Jesus that are Record Scratch moments. Or like, did he just say that? And today is one of those. You might guess it has something to do with baptism. You've heard about that. Where Jesus looks at John the Baptist, the guy who baptized him, and say, baptize me 
which 2,000 years ago we're going to see was a record scratch moment. And it was, it's actually the most significant statement of all the statements so far in this series because it leads to one of the more significant events and acts in the life of Jesus that is super important, but also important for us because it's one of the acts of Jesus that he asks us to do as well. I mean, a lot of things Jesus did that were amazing, he does not ask us to do. He does not ask us to die on the cross for the sins of the world. He does not ask us to walk on water. He does not ask us to raise people from the dead. I mean, it could happen, I guess, but that's not. But he does ask us to, to do this, this act of baptism. And it is a way bigger deal to God and to our own lives than any of us can, can really comprehend, I believe. And so today, I want to get us closer to that. And for those of you who've been baptized, an opportunity to reflect, to think it actually matters now in ways that we may not think about. And how can it matter now? And for those who have yet to be baptized as a believer, then it's an opportunity to do that. And there'll be uh, people already prepared getting baptized, but also this weekend be an opportunity for you. And there's logistics attached to this. I'll talk about later to say, you know what? I think I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the plunge. And so just be open to that thought as we talk about baptism. And in, in this record scratch moment, when Jesus got baptized, so I'm going to read the passage, and then we'll talk about it and say, well, why was that a record scratch moment? Well, here's why. Matthew 3. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. You may have heard of John the Baptist. That's who it is. But John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Now, there's a lot going on here, and to understand, well, why would you try to talk God out of doing something, but I, I have a lot in my life, but what's really going on in the passage? And to understand that, let's kind of go back. So, um, so John the Baptist was the one that God had called and set aside to be like a prophet, to be the one that would help the nation of Israel, the people of God in the Old Testament era be ready for the coming of Jesus, the coming of the Messiah, the one that had been promised for centuries. And, he's, and so that's his ministry. So he starts his ministry before Jesus, pointing people to, hey, the Messiah is here, the Savior is here, about to be revealed. And that's his ministry. So a whole new era of how to relate to God is starting. And John the Baptist is the one to let everybody know it. And to let everybody know it, another thing that he does that, is, that may sound like, well, that would be normal for a religious person to do, baptize people. It was not normal at all what John was doing, baptizing people. Because John, by baptizing people, was baptizing Jewish people, which never happened. So Christianity comes out of Judaism, the people of God in the Old Testament, through which the Messiah came. And baptism was a thing, Jewish people didn't get baptized, people who, they did have baptism, but that was for people who were not Jewish, who wanted to become Jewish, then they would get baptized. And they would go into the water, come up out of the water as a way to say, yeah, the old me is gone, there's the new me, and, and this is my commitment now. And so that was something people knew about for non-Jewish people, but not for Jewish people. That never happened for Jewish people, because they're like, well, I'm already in. So when John comes and starts baptizing Jewish people, as well as Gentiles or non-Jewish people, that was a shocker. It was, it, and it created a lot of attention. I mean, this was the biggest news in Israel going on. This was bigger than Taylor Swift coming to town. I mean, this was, people were coming out and trying to find out what's going on. It was controversial. Why is he baptizing Jewish people? What's going on here? And again, it's a signal by God that this is a whole new era where everybody's gonna come to God the same way. Not the way it was before with the temple and sacrifices. This is a whole new way, and everybody comes the same way. So whether you're Jew, Gentile, non-Jew, whatever, doesn't matter. Everybody's going to come to God the same way through the same Savior. And when the, when the, uh, the story of John is told in this story, uh, every one of them has a phrase somewhere in that story where it talks about how John was baptizing for the forgiveness of sins. Now, that was controversial, too. Because the setup for forgiveness of sins was the temple, where people would sac be, you know, do give sacrifices and animal sacrifices for sin, pointing to the Messiah. 
But now this baptism is announcing a new era where forgiveness of sins has nothing to do with that anymore. No more temple, no more sacrifices, because now, as John said to, about Jesus, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world because he's going to give his life as the final and ultimate sacrifice. And now everybody comes to God the same way. And it's not about our works. It's about the work of Jesus on our behalf. This is a whole new thing. So there's a lot going on here. So for Jesus to come and say, baptize me was a shocker for people because it meant Jesus was putting his stamp of approval on this new crazy guy in this new way of relating to God. But it was also a record scratch moment for John the Baptist because he knows, okay, this is the savior of the world. This is the Messiah. I don't know if he knew that Jesus was God quite yet. I, I think he would eventually know that. I mean, his followers would as Jesus sort of revealed himself over time. I don't know if he had an inkling of that, but if he did, can you imagine God in human form asking you to baptize him? I mean, I think, I mean, I think I'd say, yeah, I don't think I'm the one to do that. Like, I, I don't think so. I, 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 you know, let's get somebody else better than me. You know, Gene Getz has got to be around here somewhere, you know, or somebody, right? I mean, the one who started our church. And that's what John is doing. He's like, I don't know. And Jesus says, oh no, we're going to do it because this is what God requires. This is what he asks of us. And it's asked of us 2,000 years later. And he's like, man, this is something we're going to do to honor God. And we know how big of a deal it is to God because what happens next? After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of God. So God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. So Jesus is the son of God. The spirit, Holy Spirit comes and, and is there. And a voice from heaven, the father says... I should say it deep. This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. And it's a big moment for God. And that's why I say, I don't think we fully appreciate. I don't think I fully appreciate. I know I don't fully appreciate how significant the act of baptism is to God and how significant it is to us. Not just Jesus's baptism, but our baptism as well. 2000 years later. In fact, it's the first step that Jesus asks of anybody who chooses to be a believer, anybody who chooses to follow Jesus. In Matthew 28, uh, his mission, he said, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. The first step after belief is baptism. And, and we're going to see tonight why it's such a big deal. And I'm going to encourage you uh, to consider it. Um, for one, if you've been baptized, to be able to see it for what it is, so that you can always look back and remember, oh yeah, that's right. But for those who've yet to be baptized as a believer, an opportunity to take that step and, uh, and, and, and join with a bunch of other people who will do just that. But before we get into that, I want to make sure we really understand baptism because there's a lot of confusion out there. Because we've had 2,000 years of church history, and therefore there's a lot of different traditions and lots of different views. Some people baptize babies, some don't. Some baptize people who are old enough to make that decision. Some sprinkle, some pour, some dunk. Uh, there's all, you know, some believe it's necessary for going to heaven, salvation. Some say, no, it's, it's a, you know, belief is what's necessary. It's a sign of belief. It's not for that. And so you've got all, all, a lot of confusion, depending on the background that you came from, if you came from a background. So we want to kind of peel the layers back, go back to the Bible and say, okay, what is this? And for those who are new to Christianity, um, well, baptism is a pretty weird thing to do. Like if, you've, if you're not a Christian and you look at Christianity from the outside looking in, it's like, like where else do people choose to get dunked underwater in front of a bunch of people? You know, I mean, maybe the fair at a dunking booth or something, but that's about it. And so like, okay, what, what's the deal? And, and, and so we're going we're gonna to look at it. I'm just going to kind of pepper us with some questions that come out of it. And the first question is who should get baptized? Babies or people old enough to decide, right? Because you may have grown up in an a environment, in a, in a setting where you were baptized as a baby and baptized as an infant. And there's a whole wing, you know, whole wings of the church that, uh, that do that, that baptize babies. And, and there's some reasons for that. It, if you equate baptism with circumcision in the Old Testament and as a sign of coming into the covenant, this relationship with God and ba babies and baptism doing the same thing. So I, I'm not saying it's without reason. However, 
when I look at the scriptures, what I see consistently is that baptism is for, is for those who are old enough to decide. Because what you see in the Bible is belief precedes baptism. And that's why there's, there's not one example in the New Testament of a baby being baptized. There's not one command or instruction to baptize babies. Um, what you see, again, is every time belief happens, somebody believes in Jesus and then displays that through the act of baptism. Like in Acts 16, it says, the Lord opened her heart, Lydia, to respond to Paul's message. And when she and members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. So belief and then baptism. In Acts 8, 12, Philip with the Samaritans said, but when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Uh, people were all that they made the decision and then they wanted to display that decision. So belief precedes baptism. And that's why we don't baptize babies. We dedicate babies. And that's a very important thing. And, and if you have a baby and want to dedicate, you'll, you can look online and figure out how to do that here. And that's a, I think that's a powerful thing to do. And there's biblical precedent for that, but we don't baptize babies because I mean, babies aren't quite old enough for that. I mean, I know your baby's way advanced. I do know. I mean, I know that, you know, like, uh, can I show you the new Jones baby? Here's the, the we're two weeks old now. So this is uh, Leland Jane when she was about four days old. That's Christy and me in Colorado. And, uh, and she is the cutest, smartest little, you know, two week old on the planet. She really is. She's amazing. And uh, however, she's not that smart. I mean, she's not ready to understand about Jesus and to make that decision and all that. So, you know, so we'll, you know, hopefully she'll come to the place where she'll make that decision. And so it raises a question and that is, well, okay, if you've been baptized as a baby, should you be baptized now that you're old enough to, de to decide? And I would say a strong, yes, you should, um, as an act of obedience. And, uh, and I mean, you can disagree or whatever, but I, I believe biblically, it's like, yeah, I do think you should take that step as, because that's what the belief precedes baptism and to display that. And you'll see all the reasons why. And so I'm going to encourage you to get baptized if you have not been baptized as a believer, as a, somebody old enough to make that decision. And, and I know sometimes that creates some discomfort because like, well, what am I going to tell mom? Because she's going to be offended. Like if I get baptized, like, and, and I, th I think it's pretty easy to explain of just saying, hey, thank you so much for being the kind of parent that wanted me to be at the place I am right now, the place where I'm making my decision to follow Jesus. And that's what you wanted. That's what was in your heart. And thank you for raising me that way. And, and I hope you'll celebrate this as now as an adult or somebody old enough to decide that I'm, I'm taking this step. And so that's that question. The next one is dunking or sprinkling. Uh, how wet do you have to get, you know? And, uh, and because there are some traditions that sprinkle, there's some that pour, and there's some that dunk. And, uh, and I don't think this is the biggest deal in the world, honestly, but um, we're dunkers. And here's why. I, I think 2,000 years ago, it really wouldn't have been that confusing. Because 2,000 years ago, the word baptized meant something. And there was a lot of confusion created because when the people started interpreting or translating the Bible from Greek in which it was written, Koine Greek, into other languages like English, they chose not to translate the word baptizo is the Greek word. Instead of translating it, they decided just to transliterate it. And all that means is you invent a new word. You take the Greek letters, you know, beta, B, uh, alpha, A, P, some P, I know you grew up saying pi, but it's P, and uh, tau and all that, and you just make a new word. So now baptism or baptize is like a churchy word, like a spiritual word. We're going to baptize you. It's like, ooh. But 2,000 years ago, it was a normal word. And guess what it meant? To dunk, to submerge. Like if you were making, uh, if, if you were making potatoes and wanted to boil your potatoes, you would baptize your potatoes in water. And uh, not because you're trying to make holy potatoes, but because you just want to cook your potatoes. Or if you were washing your clothes, you would baptize your clothes underwater. And not because you're trying to make holy clothes, but because you're just, you know, that's what you do. You, you submerge it underwater and do, do your thing. And so when, when they heard Je, you know, John the baptizer, it was another way to translate that would be John the dunker or John the submerger. So I, I don't think it was a big like, mystery 2,000 years ago. It's also the reason we prefer dunking over sprinkling 
It's, it's, we just feel like it's the best picture of what happens at baptism. Paul talks about baptism in Romans and how it's a picture of what happens when we come to believe. How when you go under the water, it's a reminder of how when you believe in Jesus, you die to your old self, and then Jesus raises you up to a whole new life. And coming up out of the water is a picture of that. We think that's a better picture. However, if you want to get sprinkled rather than dunked, and you know you just spent five hundred dollars on a haircut or something, we'll we'll oblige, all right? Or or if some people have phobia, we're not going to send you to the hospital over it or whatever. But we do we we do we are dunkers uh, primarily. Another question is who can baptize others, just pastors or normal people? Because I can tell you, I know a lot of pastors, and they're not normal people. Uh, they're not. I've never met one. Well, we're hosting a pastor's conference with hundreds of pastors this week. There won't be one normal person there, and that's okay, you know, but, uh, but they're not normal. And, uh, and that's a great question, right? Because in a lot of church settings, like, no, you got to be a professional Christian. You got to be paid to be a Christian if you're going to baptize people. But in the New Testament, that category didn't really exist. Um, the idea in the Bible is that every believer is a minister. Every believer has a ministry, and, uh, and, and so what you see in the New Testament is there wasn't that hierarchy and you got to be a certain person to be able to do that. You see uh, people baptize each other. And so therefore we as a church have always uh, used that freedom. And it's a beautiful thing to see um, parents baptizing their kids or sometimes, you know, kids as they get a little bit older, but like kids baptizing parents or a husband baptizing a wife or vice versa or a friend baptizing a friend or a leader a uh, small group leader, a kids co-leader, something baptized. And one of the most beautiful pictures, I think it was the last time we did this in 2023, where a family was baptized and the, all, the whole family decided to get baptized. I think there were four of them. And the wife baptized the husband and then the husband baptized the wife and then they both baptized their two kids and because they all, were all coming to faith. And it was just a cool, cool thing to see. And so if you, uh, if you want somebody to baptize you, like if you choose to get baptized tonight and you're with somebody, you'd be like, man, I'd really like them to do that, then great. Um, bring them with you. And there's pastors to do that, but also uh, you can choose to do the other. Another question, is baptism necessary for salvation? Uh, and some groups of Christians would say yes. And, and, I, and the reason is it, it's so associated with belief. Like sometimes it says, believe and be baptized. Because there was no gap in the New Testament world between believing and being baptized. You believed and then right away you were baptized. But the answer to do you have to be baptized to be saved or to have a relationship with God and go to heaven, all that no is the answer. Just like it is to any work that we do. Ephesians, Paul makes that clear, for example. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Baptizing, being, getting baptized is a work that does not save us. It's a honors God. It's a wonderful thing to do. It, but it's about belief that brings us into God's family. And then we display that belief through baptism. So no, it doesn't. Well, then it maybe comes up with another question. And that is, well, if I'm going to heaven anyway, then do I really have to get baptized? Because, you know, get kind of wet and, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. It's, you know, I mean, and, uh, and I think that's a messed up question. Right? I mean, to say, okay, I know Jesus wants me to. It's the first thing he asks of any believer. Yeah, he gave his life for me on the cross, but really? Do I have to get baptized in front of a bunch of people and get dunked underwater in front of a bunch of people? And um, yeah, you do. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and as we're going to see, it's actually really important that we do for us, but also to God. It matters to him. And, uh, and so, yeah. Which leads me to the question is, well, then, why is it such a big deal? Why should every Christian, Jesus follower, be baptized? And there's three big reasons. One is for you. That is a baptism as a marker event that seals your decision to follow Jesus. It's a tangible act after an intangible decision. Because, you know, belief is such an intangible thing, right? You say, okay, I believe in Jesus, and okay, I, I, I receive that gift that Jesus offers of salvation, and okay, I'm in. But it's very intangible. And I don't know about you, but I remember when I was a kid or teenager when I became a Christian, and I never knew if it really took. So I bet I, I, bet I prayed the prayer, so to speak, 200 times, because I wanted to make sure like it really took. I really meant it. But when I got baptized, that changed, because baptism is a tangible act that kind of seals the deal to your soul. Like, 
Like you can always remember the moment you got baptized. I mean, because that's a moment of clarity. And it's a moment of clarity that if you're a Christian for a very long time, you're going to need it. Because there's going to come a time where you're going to have doubts about your relationship with God. And maybe you're going to, you sin, you blow it, you feel so much shame and whatever. And, you, and, and baptism lets you look back and realize, no, wait a minute, I remember. I, 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 I remember the clarity I had at that moment. And how, yeah, I, was, I, was, I knew I was going to follow Jesus and I was counting on him to be the one that saves me, that forgives sin based on his work, not on mine. And that Jesus forgave me, not only my past sin, but my future sin too. And all of it is, is done away and I don't have to live in shame and I can live in victory and live in freedom and live in joy because of the work of Jesus. And I'm telling you, baptism is a very powerful reminder of, oh yeah, I remember that. The other, another reason is for others. Baptism is a very powerful display to other people of that internal choice. It's one thing to say in your own heart, yes, I believe in Jesus. It's another thing to go public in a way that other people know about it. And the great thing about church now being streamed and, and all of that is you, you have a record of it uh, that you can show people and all that too. And, uh, and it's a powerful thing. And the last reason is really the most important, and that is for others. I mean, excuse me, for, for Jesus, that baptism honors him. I mean, that should be enough. It, it, it's, it's the one thing, the first thing Jesus asks us to do is to say, if you're gonna, if you wanna follow me, if you wanna believe in me, then yeah, make that choice and then display that choice through the act of baptism. And just like God was so honored when Jesus did that, I believe he's uniquely honored when we do the same thing. It matters more than I, that's why I said it matters more than I think we can understand. And to give us a picture of that or feeling of that, I, I, we're gonna hear a video from one of the people that's already planning to be baptized this weekend. His name is Daniel. And let's hear his story. I'm deciding to get baptized today because I feel like it's uh, the next step that God is calling me, uh, he's calling me to do. Uh, came to know Jesus about five years ago. And uh, for me, that journey's looked a lot a lot like a, a, a big wrestling match, <laughs> if you will. A lot of back and forth, uh, a lot of feelings of shame and guilt. Uh, I, I've, I've wrestled with the idea of baptism for a long time, but, but for, for many years felt like I was not worthy of, like I had too much sin in my past, like I still lived too sinful of a life, and um, those feelings of shame and guilt would win out. Um, at the end of the day, uh, it, it took me some, some time. And in my time here at Chase Oaks, I've really come to understand the, uh, the, 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 the free gift of, of salvation that is Jesus and uh, the grace, the forgiveness that is available. And uh, all I've had to do is say thank you. It's, it's not mine to wrestle against. And so, you know, for me, a uh, big piece of this is surrender. And I feel like baptism is just the next step in my walk. Well, way to go, Daniel. Um, and we do have some people ready to be baptized, but I, I'm, like I've been hinting at, I'm going to encourage you, um, even if you didn't come ready to be baptized or thinking you'd be baptized today, to take that step. Um, because in the New Testament world, it happened immediately. Like somebody believed and then they were baptized. My favorite story of that is in Acts 8, the Ethiopian eunuch. If you don't know what a eunuch is, Google it uh, later, uh, just not on image. Uh, I, I shouldn't have said, I've, that won't happen on Sunday. I, won't, I don't know why it's ADD moment. But uh, the eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? This guy who's a non-Christian, he was a kind of Christian. And then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. And as they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here's water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? Like, why not get baptized now? And Philip is like, yeah, that's right. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water and Philip baptized him. And I love that question. Why not get baptized now? And I'm going to throw it out to you. Why not get baptized now? I mean, yeah, you get your hair wet or whatever. I get that, but that's kind of lame. But why not, why not get baptized now? For those who've never been baptized as a, somebody old enough to decide, why not get baptized now? In fact, we have... Uh, in a little bit, 
will turn you loose. Those who want to go back, uh, you just go back through these doors and there's people who will help you uh, know what to do, but there's clothes to change into. Uh, there's a uh, shirt now that we have. Um, it's kind of a memento that you take with you too and, and the clothes you get, but um, and it, it's cool now because the, when it gets wet, there's a thing. It says the old, the old is gone and then on the bottom when it gets wet, it says roll tide. It's really cool. And uh, no, it says the new has come. The new has come. And, uh, and you'll see that tonight when people get out. And, and, uh, and so if, again, I'm just gonna, I, I know it's a lot to but just think, man, why not now? And, uh, and so if you wanna do that here in a little bit, when this, after I pray, then you can get up and go. And if you wanna take somebody with you, if you're you know, a baptism buddy to just kind of be on the stage with you and stuff, that's great. If there's somebody you'd like to baptize you, then that's great too. Uh, but there'll be pastors who'll be doing it. Uh, for some of you, like I said, if you're baptized as a baby and not as an adult, I'd encourage you to take that step. Uh, for some of you, you know, maybe you got baptized at some point, you really didn't know what it was about, you know, but you did it because it made everybody happy. And, uh, but it wasn't really your thing, your decision, and this would be a time to say, no, I, this is, I, I want it to be my thing. Um, for some, this may be the, op- the moment where you decide, I want to, like Daniel, I, I, I say yes to that gift of Jesus. And, and then he, wants, he, he made it possible for me to have a relationship with him. It's not about what I do. It's about what he's done for me. And he offers forgiveness and life with him forever as a gift. And my job is just say, be open and say, thank you. And then when you make that decision, then the first thing to do is display that through baptism. And so maybe that's what's going on. I don't, I don't know where you are, but I'd encourage you to be open to taking that step and joining uh, those who have already prepared for this moment. And so what's gonna happen a little bit, um, I'm gonna pray, the band is gonna sing a song, and during that time would be the time if you wanna go back and get changed and get baptized and then come in line over here on this side and, uh, and choose to choose to get baptized. And the rest of us, it's our opportunity to celebrate and to cheer you on. And, uh, and we will. And so let's bow our heads together in prayer. As I always say, prayer is just talking to God in your own words. And I invite you just to talk to him and just say, God, what do you think? For some of you, this may be a time to reflect back to your baptism, that moment of clarity. In fact, go ahead and think about it. Like, think back if you were baptized. Say, God, help me remember that moment. And just seal it in my heart. And for those who have yet to take that step, then I'm gonna encourage you just, I know there's some courage here, but just say, God, give me the oomph and the courage to just do it and to take the plunge. And help me honor you that way. And for some, this may be your opportunity to say, God, I believe. I wanna say thank you for the free gift that you offer. You offer everything free because Jesus paid for it because I couldn't. And I wanna know you. I want a relationship with you that starts now and lasts forever. And and begin a relationship with you. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll do this to display that. Father, wherever we're coming from, we sure thank you for your love and your grace and your goodness. And we wanna celebrate everybody taking this big step. In Jesus' name, amen.